meeting is called to order. The pledge will be led by board member Teresa Lawson. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the first meeting of the 22-23 school year. Thank you all for being here. Roll call, Mrs. Vaughn. Chairman, we're missing Dr. Hill this evening. Missing Dr. Hill. Thank you so much. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion by Amy Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Andy Witt. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Baum? That's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you so much. Special items, individuals to address the board. Um, we actually, on a non-agenda item, we actually did have someone um, who requested to address the board, and that was approved by Dr. Stevens and I, but um, seeing that she's not here, we'll move on. Is there anyone to address the board on an agenda item? Seeing there's no one, we will move on. Thank you so much. Naming of areas, Dr. Stevens. Yes, this evening I bring a recommendation for your approval with regard to the naming of two athletic areas. Area number one is the press box area at Wilkins Stadium. Area number two is the picnic area between the football practice field. Do you get me okay? Oh, very good. Football practice field and the woods. Tullahoma, as you know, has a rich history of volunteer work, and I would like to now invite our athletic director, John Olive, to speak in further detail about these areas and the gentleman he would like to name these areas after. Mr. Thank Olive. you. Um, first person that I felt like we needed to recognize, if you all will approve, is Terry Pockers. Uh He has worked in the press box for the last 47 football seasons. And it goes beyond just being there on Friday nights. He's been there for the middle school games. He's there for the freshman games. He's there for the junior varsity games, as well as the Friday night games. Uh, he made sure at the time that he checked them that the sound system would work, that the scoreboard was working, that the play clocks were working. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about him, when we were putting in the new scoreboard, they had dug the hole, uh, they hit a spring, which I know surprises everybody. Uh, the hole was probably dug about 15 feet deep. He and Kenny Banks climbed down in the hole because it filled back up with three feet of mud and it wouldn't pass inspection. And he climbed down in that hole and spent six hours shoveling by hand to get the mud up and out of the hole. Uh, what I would like, uh, we have a control room, game control room up there, and I'm asking for you all to name it the Terry Pockers control room. So it will just be that one little section of the press box. We'll put a nameplate on the door where it says right now, game controls. It will add his little plaque, and I would like to recognize him at our football game uh, before the ball game starts with a plaque from the athletic department. The second area is an area that we started on this, Mark Moran and I started on this probably, I started to say four or five years ago, it may have been six or seven years ago. Uh, an area between the football practice field and the wood line. There are already some memorial trees over in that area that have been placed there by people or by classes. And we would like to take a small little section, put in a couple of picnic tables, uh, put a little concrete pad underneath them and so forth. And we would like to recognize what we're calling lifetime wildcats. Uh, and these are the first, all of them happen to be gentlemen in this situation. First one is James Sleepy McKenzie, who was instrumental in the formation of the Lions Bowl. Um, Mr. McKenzie was instrumental in raising the funds for the new field house, which is part of the Creed McClure Field Houses. 
that new field house was built in 1993, so unless you've been here a while, you don't know which one's the new one. Uh, it's where the weight room is at this time. The second individual is a man named Benz Jordan, who was a sports enthusiast that loved all sports, especially THS baseball, as he was also a head umpire. But he also loved football, and he was the voice of the Wildcats for many years before I arrived. He became a color play-by-play -play man, but he was somebody who was always supporting our athletes in all the sports. The next gentleman is Gary Hall. And Gary Hall was one of the first volunteers to start pulling the equipment trailer for the football team to the away football games. As an owner of several markets, Gary helped THS football with drinks, ice, food, etc. But what really stands out to me is I'm going to give you two examples uh, that I knew of. I'm walking into the cafeteria my second or third year. Amy, you're probably still a student there. And... Um, I see Gary walking out, and I speak to him and so forth, and I go through, get my food, and I walk up, and Miss Phelps is there, and uh, that's who he had been with, and I said, what happened? Drew forget his money, and Gary's up here to take care of him? And she said, no, but I'm going to tell you something as long as you don't tell anybody else, and I kept this until he died. Uh, she told me that there were two students in tough situations that he knew about. And he had just paid for their lunches for the rest of that semester. And we're in September. And that was back when we started after Labor Day because of the construction going on. She said, and that's not the first time that he's laid down four or five hundred dollars to help children. The other example, we had a football player get killed in a tragic wreck. He and a younger brother, Jedediah Sullivan, a uh, poor young man. When he was killed, Coach Dyer and I decided we were going to plant trees for he and his little brother out there where the memorial area is by the high, front of the high school. And um, Gary just happens to come through. He's trying to figure out why two football coaches are out there with shovels in their hands digging a hole. We tell him. And I said something to him about, uh, hey, I may need a little help in raising some money to put a stone there for him. And two weeks later, their stones are there. I priced them. They were $1,200 a piece. The next two, golly day, they're just wildcats through and through. Steve Cousymore and Jim the King Pearson, who love Tallahoma football as much as they love life. And for more than two decades, these two men raised the majority of the funds for Tallahoma football. These two men would raise money for Frank Mullins Youth Football on Monday, return on Tuesday to get you to give money to the middle school football team, and then on Friday they'd take your money to support their Tallahoma Wildcats. And any of you that knew them know that I'm telling you the truth, that they had no fear at asking for you to help them. And uh, so anyway, they were lifetime Wildcats, and I ask that you allow us to start this picnic area and get it built this time. Mark and I have decided we're going to get it done. Uh, and as Dr. Stevens said, we're leaving an, an area to keep adding names to that when it's appropriate to add another name. That's what I ask. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? Thank no you so much. John, but thank you so much for sharing about mm -hmm. those wonderful, wonderful men. Thank you so much. Thank you. So the administration does accept, uh, <clears throat> recommend uh, accepting the naming of the athletic areas as presented this evening. Very good. Thank you. Do I have the recommendation to accept the names as presented? So moved. Uh, motion by Pat Welsh. Is there a second? Second by Amy Dotson. Any dis any discussion? 
I would just like to say, from someone who's been born and raised here, family has been involved in sports for generations, I knew almost all of those people that he said, or I knew of them because I've heard my family talk about them, and I don't think it'd be an honor to, re to recognize them. Right. Anything else? All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? That's all in favor, Jim. Great. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Co Coach Olive. Consent agenda. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented? So move. Motion by Andy Witt. Is there a second? Second. Second by Amy Johnson. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? It's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you so much. Moving on to unfinished business, buildings and grounds. <clears throat> Excuse me, Teresa Lawson. Okay, um, you've got a lot. <laughs> okay. we, you always so buckle lot. up. Uh, we uh, we met on August the eighth, and this, we discussed the following. I'm going to be brief. I I have it written out. But um, uh, first of all, we we discussed the uh, we discussed built-in trophy cabinet for both the gym lobby and the auditorium lobby and this is to highlight the student and team accomplishments this is just a conversation and we'll I'm sure we'll continue to discuss uh, next we discuss the need to replace the rubberized stair treads on three sets of steps uh, and this is on this is an action item on the agenda tonight and we discussed the tennis court project, and it is progressing as scheduled. Now, it may look like not a lot <laughs> at times is going on. I think we discussed it maybe looked like some gravel was moved here to here, but uh, we do have some walls up, and it is uh, going along as scheduled. I, I mean, I want it done. I, I think it should be, you know, all ready and, and up like the... Uh, convenience markets but no we're, we're we're going slow and steady to make sure that they're that they are completed and uh, and, and, and completed uh, appropriately uh, we uh, discussed the roof project uh, and all that the, by the way the, this is all at, at Tullahoma High School I forgot to say that at the beginning so the roof project is progressing as scheduled uh, we uh, the parking lots were completed during the summer break we got a, uh, quite a bit done and I say we <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we got a lot uh, completed during the summer break uh, the three bathroom ceilings uh, were sheetrocked by the maintenance department during the summer break the HVAC has been installed in in the new aviation space by the maintenance department during the summer break as well I may have missed the welding shop upgrades that were installed and completed during the summer break. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Bel Air. Uh, the roof project is ongoing as scheduled. The, uh, the HVAC change out was completed during the summer break. The ceiling tile replacement was completed during the, the summer break. And uh, the uh, the lighting updates were completed during the summer break as well. I did go over, everything looks so, so nice, so good. And if anybody has a chance to to drop in mm -hmm. and, and look at this, it, it looks really good. East Middle School. Uh, uh, TCS personnel met with a prospective contractor regarding the drainage at the softball field. The contractor has not followed up with the staff and uh, they will continue to search for qualified contractors that are able to remedy this drainage issue. So that's ongoing. Uh, uh, the staff is waiting on the concrete contractor for additional concrete work needed for the softball bleacher area. The uh, classroom painting is ongoing and near completion and the paving project was completed during the summer break. So there's quite a bit going, has gone on during the summer at East Middle School. West Middle School. Uh, pressure washing of the stucco, uh, stucco and staple sidewalk exterior doors, as well as cleaning of the windows was completed during the summer break. The concrete culvert added to assist in water runoff was completed during the summer break. 
Um, there is a need to move up the parking lot resealing to to schedule this year. This is an action item agenda uh, for tonight. The uh, we also discussed the need for additional sidewalks. Uh, Jason Ray is working with OLG on plans and concepts to accomplish this work. On to fair. The committee was updated that the architect contract has been finalized. So that's a step closer. And uh, that the construction manager contract specifications have been finalized. The bidding period is currently open. At East Lincoln, the committee was updated that the wheelchair ramp reconstruction was completed during the summer break. Uh, we, uh, we discussed the water sample has been sent for analysis in an attempt to determine the cause of pipe pitting. And at the central office here, uh, maybe you've noticed, I'm sure, that we have, uh, have the office north parking lot paved, uh, and that project has been completed. And this project will provide much needed and improved parking space for our staff and visitors. And let me say, I just think the building inside and out, the parking lot, it looks so, mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a lot mm -hmm. that I were, um, that the staff, the maintenance staff, all staff have been very heavily involved in this summer, especially. And um, I just wanted to say thank you mm -hmm. to all of them because this is, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. And we're we're really pleased. I know the I, I, the board's really pleased. But is there anything, Andy and Pat, that that you'd like to add? Or I've really got nothing to, to add other than just it's amazing the amount of work that has been done. Mm -hmm. And just yeah, I just want to I guess uh, repeat that that how much we appreciate all the all the work the maintenance people have, have done and all the other staff and I did I parked intentionally in the new parking lot when I came in today just so I could use it one small note uh, the uh, entrance at west is on the right as you're coming off the road and, and it really had a ponding area there mm -hmm. and for a couple of years we've done mm -hmm. two or three things cut the curve make it like an inch or two <coughs> Never did work, but if you haven't seen that, there was a whole lot of concrete work done over there. Yeah. Like culvert, it's it, it's bound to shed a ton of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's that's saving the life of that entrance. Great, so so many good th things, and thank you so much to the committee. Um, everyone has done a great job. A lot of times, a lot of the work being done isn't things that we really notice. And now it's stuff that you really notice. I mean, this is kind of the fun stuff, right? Yeah, it's kind of fun stuff that you're really seeing. I mean, watching the high school, they were working on the roof. They were all down here. And yes. now they've all moved to the other side. And that was kind of funny to see all that happen. So very interesting. And it's so funny because I'm so excited about the tennis courts and anxious. I mean, we've waited <laughs> on them for like 3,000 years. And so we expected them to be done like the next day. But they're going to be great. So thank you all. Thank, thank you, Maintenance Committee. Um, THS rubberized stair tread replacement, Mr. Ray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, many of the rubberized stair treads at the high school have sustained damage due to the years of heavy use. Three sets of stairs have been identified as needing the rubberized treads replaced. We obtained pricing from Mills Floor Covering for this potential project. The three areas identified and pricing for each area are listed. The stairwell to the band area was quoted at a cost of $14,265. The stairwell to the ROTC area was quoted at a cost of $4,732. And the north stairwell, formerly uh, the stairwell to 101, was quoted at $8,987. The total for, for all three areas is $27,984. A building and grounds committee has discussed and recommended proceeding with this project. Madam Chair. Very good. Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept the bid from Mills Floor Covering? So moved. Motion by Pat Welsh. Is there a second? Second. Second by Teresa Lawson. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? That's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you very much. West Middle West Middle parking lot resealing, Mr. Ray. Thank you. Uh, 
couple of years ago, we asked Silwright to determine a level of prioritization for each of our parking areas and determine the need and the timing of the resealing of those properties. As you recall, last year we resealed East Lincoln, East Middle, and the High School. Uh, Silwright's assessment determined that West Middle School would be the next needed property. The work uh, that we hope will come be completed at West Middle will complete the cycle based on the assessment that we asked Silwright to do. Uh, and this project is included in this year's budget. If you'll recall, this project was originally going to be in next year's budget, but because of the timing of the summer project at the high school, it was completed and paid for in last year's budget. And so uh, we have the ability and the available funds to do the West project a year early in essence. The quoted amount for West Middle School is $34,085.65. This maintenance includes joint and crack sealant, two coat sealing applications, line striping, arrow and handicap markings. Silwright does provide one year warranty on materials and workmanship. The Building and Grounds Committee and I recommend approving Silwright for this resealing project at West Middle School in the quoted amount of $34,085.65, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to accept the bid from Silwright? So moved. Motion from Amy Johnson. A second? Second. Second from Andy Witt. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? That's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Budget adjustments. Mr. Ray. Thank you. Um, as is our normal process, annually I come to you at the conclusion of the previous fiscal year uh, to make uh, amended appropriations uh, to reflect our actual revenue and expenditures. And so this is a normal anticipated process for the end of our budget cycle. Um, with your approval, our amended budget will be forwarded to the city as well as the State uh, Board of Education and Comptroller's Office. Thank you. Is there a motion to accept the amended FY22 budget? So moved. Motion by Amy Dotson. A second. Second. Second by Teresa Lawson. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? That's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you. FY23 budget amendments. Mr. Ray. Thank you. Um, as we discussed at the June board meeting, uh, you all approved the FY23 GP budget, but we did discuss that if any change was made in our BEP final calculation that I would need to come back to you uh, to make an amendment uh, to that process. And so our final BEP calculation was $14,000 less than the previous estimate. And so the budget in front of you has been reduced both on the revenue and the expenditure side by $14,000 to reflect that change. Uh, obviously the revenue line item that has been changed is the BEP line item and the expenditure line item under 71100 um, regular education and the line item and the object code 116 which is regular ed teacher salaries has been reduced by that same amount because that is our largest uh, expenditure line item. Uh, this change does require bore action and again once approved this can be submitted to the city and to the state. Uh, for our annual filing, <coughs> Madam Chair. Very good, thank you. Do I have a motion to accept the FY23 general <laughs> purpose budget with revisions as presented? So moved. Motion by Pat Welsh, second. Second. Second by Amy Johnson. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? That's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray, and you're up again with differentiated pay plan. <laughs> Thank you. At the May 2022 board meeting, this board approved the differentiated pay plan for the 2022-2023 <laughs> school year. At that time, 19 positions had been identified as meeting the state's criteria for differentiated pay. Since that approval, one additional position has been identified, and that position is our CTE director. This position qualifies under the state's plan as an instructional role category. Administration recommends modifying our FY23 differentiated pay plan to add this role. Madam Chair. Thank you. 
Do I have a motion to accept the updates to the differentiated pay plan as presented? So moved. Motion by Teresa Lawson, second. <laughs> second by yeah. Amy. Amy's. Amy's. The second <laughs> by Amy Johnson. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn. That's all in favor, Chairman. Thank you so much. Policy updates. Amy Johnson. Oh, boy. Let me see. I'm having trouble with my things. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Um, the policy committee recommends updating the following policies. Policy 1.102, um, this is about board members. It updates this policy to align it to the Tullahoma City Municipal Code rather than broadly referring to districts and the county legislative body. Policy 4.205 uh, updates the policy to align it with required legislation regarding advanced courses. Policy 4.212 regards the virtual education program and updates to this policy will align it better to uh, recent legislative changes. Most of all of these policies are all about recent legislative changes. Uh, policy 4.404 regards library materials. This policy has been updated to better clarify and define the roles of the materials review committee and the board. Whoa. Policy six. Policy 6.312 regards the use of personal communication devices and electronic devices, and this will update it to align with recent legislative changes. Policy 6.409 is regarding reporting child abuse and um, defines more better <laughs> the role of a DCS team member uh, or a team in the recommended policy. Okay, so we recommend that we have these updated, that all of these policies, and I will read their numbers again, they be updated on a first and final reading. This is 1.102, 4.205, 4.212, 4.403, 6 6.312, and 6.409. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Is there a motion to accept the policy updates on a first and final reading? So moved. Motion by Teresa oh, Lawson. Is there a second? Oh. Second. Second by Andy Witt. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn? That's all in favor, Chairman. Very good. Thank you. It's great to get all those policies updated mm -hmm. right now. It's really good. Um, the Clyde Smith Jr. Leadership Award, Teresa Lawson. Um. I would like to uh, nominate Rima Bell for this year's Clyde Smith Jr. Leadership Award. Ms. Rima spent much of her professional career as a first grade teacher at Bel Air Elementary School. Ms. Rima's dedication to her students and service to others is second to none, and her willingness to take a genuine interest in the lives of her students beyond the classroom is unrivaled. I am confident that all her former students, parents, co-workers, and members of the community would agree there is no one more deserving for this award than Rima Bell. Very good. Is there any questions, any discussion? Do I have a motion to accept Rima Bell as our um, Clyde Smith Jr. Leadership Award recipient? I make the motion. Motion by Amy Johnson. Is there a second? Second by Amy Dotson. Any discussion? I'd like to say that whoever introduces her, make sure that you talk about what she does on graduation night. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, because definitely. Uh, that's. I don't, want, I don't want to steal the thunder now, but that, oh. needs, to be, that needs to be. That was both of my, mm -hmm. both of my children personally. And, uh, yes, most definitely. Um, I just quickly wanted to read this before we voted. The Clyde Smith Jr. Leadership Award was started in 2012 in honor of longtime Board of Education member Clyde W. Smith Jr. This award embodies what it means to be a servant leader and to make a huge difference in the lives of those we serve, our children. Each year, the Board of Education spends time discussing those who have served our district and community in just this way and makes a recommendation to honor them as Clyde Smith Jr. Leadership Award recipients. 
So this year, our nominee is Rima Bell. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mrs. Vaughn. That's all in favor, Chairman. Yay, what an, what an excellent, excellent recipient. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Teresa. District report, Dr. Stevens. Yes, it is so good to see all of you. It feels like it's been a while since we last gathered. That was in June, and since we haven't been together, and, and for the purposes of our guests and our audience, we want to revisit some of the things that happened. So in July, several of us attended the TSVA Law Summit. Andy Witt, Amy Dotson, Amy Johnson, Sandy Vaughn, Board Secretary, and Dr. Norris, Deputy Director, and myself. We heard the alluding to lots of legislative changes, and as you can imagine, clearly this plays out in board policy, but it also plays out in what we do in our work here related to some of these changes, whether it's changing grades in 9 through 12 or whatever those laws are. So really glad that, that several of us attended that session. We gained so much. We talk about this information at leadership meetings so that leadership team members understand what's happening. If something relates to third grade, we're meeting with elementary principals and having those conversations. So it's very important that everybody understand um, how our work continues, even though we may not be meeting in July uh, very frequently. In July, here in the district, we welcomed 57 new employees, 28 certified, 29 classified through orientations. Special thank you to our board chair who greeted both groups with her cheerleader spirit. Um, she really enjoys being clapped for, so every time they clapped for her, she would pose. And we're trying, yeah. oh, it was so much fun, yes, have that champion cheerleader. I think it's just so important for our new employees to see and hear from our board chair, from members of the leadership team, and to really feel a part. During that time, we went over with our new employees our five commitments, our five beliefs that you all are aware of here in Tallahoma City Schools. It's students first. We're all on the TCS team. We need to demonstrate a high degree of professionalism, exhibit expertise, and the big one, communicate and collaborate. That's what we're about. So we got to spend a lot of time talking about those five beliefs that we uphold here in Tallahoma City Schools. I certainly look forward to a great year. It's been a fun couple of weeks. I can't believe we are nearing the midpoint of the third week of school. I've been to every school, uh, of course, multiple times. It's so much fun to see students engaging with their teachers and watching teachers just right back in the work, making a difference in the lives of children. Speaking of students, our enrollment has changed. We've seen an increase of about 170 students, and that's about because we have some students who have not yet withdrawn. We have some that we're still processing, but you have a, a feel for where those students have landed. To summarize, globally, we've seen about an increase of 80 students at the elementary level. We've seen a huge increase at the high school level, nearly 125 students. And at the middle school level, we've seen a bit of a decrease, about 30 students there that have uh, not, not re-enrolled with us, if you will. So we see that change. I will say we had a big eighth grade class exit the middle schools and land in the high school, and that is the largest class at our high school right now, uh, topping very close to 300. Um, it's important for you to understand we take physical count as well as enrollment. So sometimes administrators reach out and they say, oh, we have this many enrolled. But I will say, remember, we're looking at physical count, and that's where those numbers are eventually going to simmer down and settle. And we'll know what our true count is in the coming weeks. Well, I look forward to how we're going to be celebrating students and faculty here at our board meetings. That's so important in our work to recognize people, and that's going to be coming really soon at our next meeting we shall start board chairman great thank you excellent report um i want to thank all of you board members for your service to our school system and community there is so much that you all do that that are in our work groups that are behind the scenes that all of that is always open to the public but they don't necessarily see all of that unless they come to the meetings and you're so appreciated and I want to thank all of the students, parents, and, and employees for a great start to the school year. 
And please note that our September meeting will be on the 27th following the TSBA district meeting on September 22nd in Franklin County. Um, and I want to thank uh, Sandy Clanaris and Sarah Litke for being here to evaluate us tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to be heading over to Sarah's stomping grounds for our TSBA uh, district meeting. We're looking forward to that. Thank you all so much. Yes, I know. That's really exciting. Yes. Love that. Thank you all. Um, City Board Liaison Report, Rupa Blackwell. So thank you guys. Um, just a couple of updates is that at the next board meeting there will be the swearing in for y'all's new school board members as well as for all the new aldermen and an outgoing um, alderman reception as well. So we'll be starting right before the board meeting. Wanted to invite you all to attend. Um, the other thing I want to give you guys an update on is the Think 2040 plan. That there are work sessions that are going to be held at D.W. Wilson August 19th from 1 to 4 p.m. The 20th from 10 to 2 the 26th from 1 to 4, and the 27th from 10 to 2 as well. Um, and these workshop sessions are open to the public. Um, I'm, I think that the format is going to be very question and answer with the, the individuals who have been working on it. So I um, just wanted to invite you all to attend and to say thank you. This is my last board meeting. I've been here for three years with y'all, and I am so impressed by the work you do, um, y'all's commitment to our, our, our children and our community as a whole. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure working with y'all. Thank you, Rupa, and we all want to thank you for everything you yes. have done for our city and the yes. support that you've given our school system. Thank you so much. Very good. Personnel report. Could I? Yes. I have a little, just a quick sentence that I would like sprinkled over the minutes. Yes. <laughs> Something to recognize the years of communication, promotion of education as a liaison between the city and the school system, and the city school system, uh, Ms. Rupa Black. That would be great, yes. Thank you so much. Mrs. Vaughn will take care of that, and she will sprinkle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Personnel, Dr. Stevens. Yes, the personnel changes for both the months of July and August um, have been presented to you in an attachment. Thank you. Monthly financial report, Mr. Ray. Thank you. Uh, the financial report you have in front of you is through the end of July, which, of course, is the first month of the fiscal year for 22-23 and so it's that uh, month where the revenue is lagging tremendously and many of the expenditures uh, that are annual related to insurance and dues and those type of things have hit and so there's uh, quite a discrepancy that we will catch up with in uh, subsequent months so thank you and it always happens and it, but it's always difficult to look at <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else to come before the group. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Amy Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Teresa Lawson. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned.